Hello, this is a training and demonstration video to show you how with EmpowerDB, generating your BC housing report will be as easy as visiting one reporting page, reviewing the information that's provided on the screen, and then clicking a export to spreadsheet button that will generate the exact Excel file that you send off to BC housing. So really your reporting process that might now take you hours or even days to complete will be turned into just a couple minute chore. All right, so uh, in order to have this all set up for you, one of the first steps you can do is just go to empowerdb.com, click on join, click on that join now button, and then you'll be taken to this form where you can choose which of our three plans you're interested in. We have a completely free plan where you can use everything that I'm showing you in this video completely for free forever. Uh, you can learn more about some of our other plans by watching this uh, introduction video there. Uh, this video will be showing you everything that you'll get on the free plan. But remember that you can do all kinds of other things that you want for whatever other reporting needs or internal uh, needs that you have uh, with some of our other plans. All right, and then so you would click the very bottom of this list, the BC Housing Report, and then fill out the rest of this form. Just a couple of quick questions. Should just take you a couple minutes. And then once you do that, you will be signed in to your very own version of EmpowerDB. So I've already entered in some uh, test <coughs> test data here, uh, but I'm gonna we're gonna go through the process now of how to add in a brand new client into the system so that you can feel comfortable with how that's gonna go. So from the home page, we'll click mouse over to add new entry, and then we're going to add a new client. All right, so we can type in the name here. And this name doesn't appear actually on the BC Housing Report. This name is just inputted here so that you can see, find this person later. Um, as you're typing in this name, to keep an eye on this existing client check section on the top right. If you're typing in a name that already exists in the system somewhere, it will and it even will look for like names with like slight mismatches. Or if you enter in a birth date that already exists in the exists in, exists in the system somewhere, you'll be notified about it here because maybe you want to just jump over to that client record instead of adding a brand new one. Um, I also want to make sure you know that the zero knowledge encryption of EmpowerDB makes it so that even EmpowerDB staff cannot read the data that you enter in onto our system. The only computers that will be able to read the data that you put into the system will be the ones that have your organization's unique encryption key on it. Uh, so it's a really important thing to um, distinguish about what makes our cloud-based database different from really any other database that I'm aware of. Okay, so you'll enter in uh, some basic demographics here. You should be familiar with a lot of these demographics as already existing on the BC Housing Report. Uh, I wanna make sure I point out this um, exact birth date um, or estimate age field. So if you know somebody's exact birth date, uh, you will always know, the system will know their age and then will always know kind of what age range category to put them in. But if you don't know somebody's exact birth date, you can estimate their age, or you can just say, I have no idea what their age is. Uh, this probably is less likely to happen in a residential setting. Um, but uh, if you do perhaps just not really know somebody's birthday at all, you can say, I think they're about 25. And then that'll put them in the right age range category. Uh, if you do say that somebody's 25 years old, and then let's say we come back to this record two years later, it would say 27. Uh, it would age the estimate like that. Okay, you will type in whatever you th think is appropriate for uh, the ethno-cultural identity. It seems like BC Housing lets you kind of pre uh, enter in, you know, there's no set list of options for that. And then you can answer these questions. Uh, how many children do they have? So if they have no children, then that's, that's the end of that. But if we say one child, then we can put in um, some really basic information about this child and um, we will put in some more information about uh, the children uh, later but this is just kind of giving us our like really basic like okay we know there's a child named margaret and we'll put in some more information about them later 
Okay, and now we're back to thinking about the, the parent, and we say, okay, let's put in some information about their move-in. Uh, you can uh, s assign them to different beds or rooms, and I'm going to show you towards the end of this video how to go through the process of setting up those different beds or rooms. Um, however you track your beds or units. I know there's one part in the BC Housing Report where it says how many units were occupied. It's really, you, you would want to set this up to, to match whatever um, you would count a bed or unit in your uh, BC Housing Report. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the end of the video. So let's say, okay, they're in the Oak Room, bed one, and they've moved in on this date. And then here's all the questions that are on the BC Housing Report. So I'm just going to quickly not really pay attention, much attention to this. Um, and then we're going to leave that blank for now. Okay, so we've just added in this client. This is all this is all it takes to add in a brand new uh, parent or, or, you know, head of household into the system. Uh, I'll again say that you surely have other information that you as an organization track about uh, new clients or move-ins and all those kinds of things. And so EmpowerDB can fully support all of those needs as well. Uh, it's not supported in our free plan, but we'd be really happy to talk to you about um, what other things EmpowerDB can do and how it can help uh, streamline your work. So we're gonna add that client and success, they are added. So let's go back to the homepage and just kind of see, okay, here's our little program list thing. We can see that Elizabeth now has been added. Um, we can go to her record, you know, again, by clicking on it like that. Uh, from any page in the database, you can right click over the lookup thing and type in somebody's name and go right to their record like that. Uh, you can also look clients up by their ID number. So every client is issued kind of a sequential ID number. So this one got issue number seven. So we could have gone and looked up client number 17 like that. Uh, and now let's talk about these program lists. So if we go to the home page, it shows us our transition house program list right here. Uh, we could also go to it in this view like that. It gives us a little bit more of a dynamic view where we can look at former residents or all residential stays. And then now let's talk about why Margaret is in light gray right here. So this is indicating that we know that this child exists, but they are not moved into the database. So it's a really good cue to say, ah, I kind of forgot to add in some of the information I need about this child. Maybe it could be the case that somebody does have a child and they really aren't moved in. You want to record that they have a child, but they're not moved in or they're not they're 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 not moving in yet. So maybe they'll come in next week and you need to be able to track, you know, that they came in a week later. So we can click on this child's name and go enter in the information that we need about the child. This and we can put in their move in and move out information here. But we can also just say copy from parent. And then so now this pre fills in all the information about um, that we need for the child. So we have the less information that we collect about uh, child move ins, uh, not, not that full set of questions that we do for parents. So we're just copying over from the parent the room and their move in date. So now let's talk about what happens if they move out and back in again. So we can say, okay, moved out. Let's change this date to something a little bit more there. We'd say, okay, they move out in this date. Um, and then we can say, I want to include an additional move in. And then when we click that, you know, things are, let's go to, to a parent because I think we get uh, some more dynamic information for the parent. So we say, we're gonna move out on that date. And then now we've got all this, this information that we need to collect about the, the parents move out. But now if they move in again, we can say include additional move in. And then now we can say, okay, now they've moved in to this room. Perhaps they've come that date. And you can just keep track of all their move in and move outs in that way. And this is how the database will track like the number of people, you know, in each night. As long as you keep these move in and move out entries correct, then the BC housing report will have those, that nightly data correct. Okay, so now that we go back, uh, we did weird things. We moved the child out, but you know we would see the 
that Margaret was now in black. And, um, you know, we can now move her out as well. On the same date, stuff like this. Okay. So there's a, that gets us everything we need for, for client data for the BC Housing Report. Uh, as far as actual residents, uh, the BC Housing Report does have another section where, where, where it counts uh, turnaways and kind of other brief services for um, people who didn't end up enrolling into the shelter. And so let's talk really quickly about how to add in that information. On the home page, we can mouse over add new entry and say add crisis call. And that brings us this simple form where we can say where the refer to community services about staying in permanent. No, uh, let's just say yes to this one. And let's say yes to that one for the turn away to say why there was a turn away in sufficient space. Uh, you could, you know, consider the, this, the process of like this data collecting here. Maybe you say, well, we would collect this data, but we wouldn't call it a crisis call. We would call it other things, or we would do it at a different whole different stage. Um, so just want to say if if you're having those kinds of uh, thoughts, get in contact with us and we'll tell you the different options that you have as far as how you can collect this data. And again, you surely collect way more data than this on if you do count it as a crisis call, you surely collect way more data than this and EmpowerDB can support all the other fields that your organization collects. This is just showing you what's needed for the BC Housing Report. So we add that and then that's what we need. Uh, I'm going to change this to like early April so I can see it easily on the report. Um, all right, so if we go to our crisis call program list, mouse over program list here, crisis calls, we can say, okay, where was the one that we did on October 16th? Okay, it was this one. We can go through and look at it and edit it, and do whatever we need. Okay, so. Uh, there's one other form here, bed unit availability log. I'm going to skip past that one and again show you kind of the BC housing report. I blew right by it in the beginning because I just wanted to make sure you knew just how incredible all this is right at the top. Uh, so again, we can go from the homepage to reports, click on BC housing report. If you are only concerned about a single month's worth of data, you can change this and say, okay, just show me October. I don't, I don't need to see all the way back from April. I already reviewed April. Um, it won't let you export that final spreadsheet because the final spreadsheet really depends on it being April 1st to March 31st, but you can still review the data and, and make sure it's, it's looking like what you'd expect to look like for the most recent month. Uh, but let's, let's just keep these default dates. Press continue. And here are our report results again. I wanted to make sure you understood what's happening when you see a big scary orange box here. As you might expect, that means we don't have that information. I think BC Housing is probably expecting you to have that information to them. The report will still work. You'll still be able to, to generate the final results, but it's just kind of a cue to you to be like, hey, let's be good data entry people and click on this client name and say, Gosh, did I spell it right? Great. Uh, and then now when we reload this, that's filled in. So keep an eye out for the orange stuff that you got that hasn't been filled in properly. Okay. Um, so you can scroll through these tables and take a look and see, make sure everything is correct. Uh, some of these, a lot of these numbers have a way where you can click on them and say, okay, they were. 12, uh, one child under 12 years old saying Latricia, and that was that child's information. And then when we scroll down here, these are nightly stats. So every day it's going to count up how many people were in the residential program at that time. And we can click on that number and see who was listed in that number. Again, this is a situation where we're having to do a lot of scrolling here because of uh, we've chosen it to include a whole entire year here, but yeah, we can see it at one point it switched from three to two and we can kind of take note of that and say, what was happening? Oh, in the Oak room, there were these two people, these two room or units, um, were occupied in the Oak room by these people. 
Um, and then here is where we have that hotline call, crisis call information, where it's going to count up the number of crisis calls that mount matched these two questions, and then count up the number of turnaways and the reasons why that match that. And we can click on that, be like, okay, yeah, I remember that, so on and so forth. And then once again, once you're all done reviewing that information, as long as you're reporting on, you chose to do the whole entire fiscal year, you'll have this export to spreadsheet button and pressing that button will download an Excel file. And this Excel file is really all complete for you to send off to BC Housing. Uh, wouldn't blame you for clicking on some of these tabs and, and doing an extra double check, um, but, but it's all, it's all going to be there. See, I'm scrolled some weird way on this. Or it's loading in. Yeah, big spread. There it is. Okay. Uh, okay. There's one one row on this report. It's a little bit of a different thing that we're used to doing. Where is it? It's something like oh, it's up above here. Number of BC housing funded spaces that were unavailable on every particular day. Okay, so you might have your some other alternate way that you keep track of this or you would just say like well i know that it was zero all throughout the year but if you do want empower db to collect this information for you the way that you would do that is to use this bed unit availability log data form program um, you would you can go add a new entry here and and you would want to start on April 1st and say, okay, I'm going to add a new entry on April 1st and you say how many units are unavailable as of this date, zero. And then let's say on May 3rd, it changed. You know, you had to go through renovations on May 3rd. So you would enter in a new entry and say, okay, May 3rd, we had to close down three. And then now let's say, okay, it, that was all sorted out uh, on June 8th. And now we're back to zero units being unavailable. Okay, so you can kind of keep this like running log of whenever there's changes. You don't have to go every day and say, okay, May 4th, um, this is, we had three units unavailable. You just have to record an entry for when there's a change in your bed unit availability. And then when you do that, the BC Housing Report will know to kind of go 0000, 000, 000, 000 until May 3rd, 3333, 3, 3, until June 8th, 0000, 000, 000, and you can do it like that. Again, just if you find that helpful to you. Okay, uh, I'm going to take you through a couple of just extra administrative things that you can or should be doing. Uh, and then that'll be it. So first thing I want to make sure you know is that you can set up as many user accounts as you want to use this system. You can just go to staff list and then click on add new staff and it will give you this really basic simple form. Their first name, last name, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you would likely be giving them access to all three of these things, but maybe you have staff that are just taking crisis calls and you don't want them seeing client being able to see the data from the transition house. Then you can, you can just do that or maybe vice versa, something like that, but probably often that you'll just click all three. And again, you can add as many staff as you want, even, even in our free count, there's no limits to the number of users that you can have in the system. Uh, all right, and now let's talk more about how to change, set these room and unit designations there. So we can do that by going to database administration, click on programs. Here is showing us our transition house program. Uh, while I'm here, I'll mention if you don't like this generic name and you have some sort of specific name for your transition house, you can call enter in that name there and it will be changed uh, like that. Uh, you probably should do that actually because I know that the BC Housing Report will include the name of the of the program here so it will put in whatever that name is in this field there. So go through and, and enter, in, enter in that program name for whatever you're expecting to be exported onto that cell right there. And down here at the bottom is our room list. So here's where you can put in each of your different rooms or units. So this, this example is showing you um, 
is assuming that we're collect we, we count a room or unit based off of like every bed inside of every room again i you you would just set this up to be whatever you interpret bc housing as requesting for you to to set up to, to be counting whether it's beds or rooms or units whatever that that is put that in there okay so you can add new entries reorganize this list whatever you need to to make sure that this program is has the room units that you want after we can go back to programs and i just also want to make sure you know that if you have multiple bc housing contracts you can set that up in the system really easily all you have to do is add in a new residential program so you'll say add in a new program continue and then make sure you put in this new residential program and it'll be very similar fields after you click add you'll be able to set up the different rooms and units and all that and then the system will know okay they moved into this other residential unit so they will appear on this other contract so when you set up that that extra program when you go to run your report here it'll be it there'll be an extra little drop down that says do you want to run it for your ABC house or do you want to run it for your DEF house um, that is that is all that is that is how to do this it's uh, we've tried to make this as easy as possible uh, there could be some other questions that you might have you might have questions like how do I delete a client how do I merge a client and just where I want to point you out to the database documentation section where you can learn how to do things like delete or merge clients and do all kinds of other fun things in the database. So please take a look here. You can also reach out to us in the database support section. Uh, for users of our free service, there you will have a limited amount of what we can do for you in terms of support, but we really want to um, you know we're extra committed to making sure that this bc housing report is is working for for everybody and is um, flexible and, and doing what you need to need it to be doing so please reach out to us if you feel like the the report you know the way the system is set up now isn't getting the numbers to you the way that your organization is used to doing it um you know the the math is going to be right it's just a matter of you know things like whether you would collect crisis call data in a totally different way or these ask these questions at a totally different point in the process of, of working with participants. Uh, all right, I hope this video has been helpful to you and I especially hope that this tool ends up saving your organization lots and lots of time. Thanks so much.